is Jesus sifting America? You gotta wonder, because hatred seems to be consuming us as a nation. Today, a message about what you can do to help build up and restore some goodwill in this nation, even for elected officials and, dare I say, for President Donald J. Trump, and to help us as a nation leave our hatred in the rearview mirror. All that coming up in just a moment. Let's go. Hey, 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 what is going on, everyone? Welcome back for another video. My name is Jason Bonnickson, if this is your first time here, and I'm a Christian YouTuber and a pastor, and I'm on a mission to help you see yourself as valued and worthy and wanted, even when other people can't or won't see you that way. And if that's something that you want in your life, then start right now by subscribing to this channel, and that way you won't miss any future content. Okay, about this message, let's dig right into it. Let's go. So just in case you didn't hear the news, this past weekend, President Donald J. Trump's younger brother, passed away at the young age of 71. It wasn't a surprise to the family at all. I guess he had been in really bad health for a number of months. But what was a surprise was what happened in the hours shortly following his death. Over 77,000 people within hours started hashtagging on Twitter, wrong Trump. Meaning that they had hoped and wished that it was the president, Donald J. Trump, who had died and not his brother. Now y'all, I think that's sick. That's an absolutely sick, sick, sick thought. To have so much hatred in one's heart for the president that you had wished him dead and not his brother. I don't know what you think, but I think that's a sick thought. And I sat back and I kind of thought about that for a little bit and I made this Facebook post. I'll put it on the screen for you. And I just revealed my heart and, and I was polite and cordial about it. And at the end of it, I said, shouldn't we instead pray for the president and his family? That's the human thing to do. One person, though, didn't agree. He had almost as much rage and hatred and anger and envy in his heart that he almost expressed the same sentiment as the wrong Trump folks that were hashtagging on Twitter. And I replied back to him. I said, your heart's really betraying you here. I said, this saddens me. This is a gentleman that I have sat with at the Thanksgiving table with for a number of years. And I've really come to admire him, respect him, especially for his craft. As a human being, I love him, but his heart really betrayed him, in my opinion. And it really got me thinking, is that happening to all of us? Whether it's hatred for the president, hatred for another politician, maybe in the other political spectrum, or just hatred for another person. And I, it really made me think, and I hope it makes you think too, because I'm going to ask you a question that's a hard one to answer. Have you ever hated somebody so much that you would wish them dead? Guilty. I'm going to confess that to you as a fellow human being. Y'all, I'm not perfect. You know, I served as a pastor for a lot of years and people put me on a pedestal thinking that I should have been more holier than thou art than they. <laughs> it's not the way it works. I'm human. I need Jesus, I need God, I need forgiveness as much as everybody else, as much as you do. But I've had to check my heart. I've had to ask God, God, forgive me of the ways that I have hated other people so much that I wish them gone. And I've had to seek the goodwill in them. And sometimes it's a daily battle, honestly. And if you've ever felt the same way about somebody who's hurt you or whatever have you, I'm gonna ask you right now just to kind of put a pause in the video and ask God, God, help me with this. God, forgive me and help me see this other person the way you see them. Put a pause, take a few minutes, come back. Okay. It's one thing when it's somebody that's hurt us. How about a politician? How about some talking head on TV that we don't know at all, right? Whether it be the president or the speaker of the house, uh, a governor, any politician, right? Could be a, a, any talking head on TV, right? If we hate somebody so much that we don't even know, then we really do need to check our hearts, right? It doesn't matter what we believe, who we affiliate with, right? We really need to check our hearts about that. And all of this has kind of got me thinking, is Jesus sifting America? It made me ask a rhetorical question. Is it possible that one of the reasons that God ordained President Donald J. Trump to ascend to the presidency is for such a time as this, to sift the hearts of Americans, to help us reveal ourselves as either a people of love and goodwill 
and ambassadors of peace, or the complete opposite, people of envy, anger, and hatred? I don't know if we're going to really know the answer to that, but to me, it kind of seems obvious. And oh, by the way, I want to, real quick, if you're liking this content so far, give it a thumbs up, share the video. Let me know that this is the right kind of video that you want to hear more of. Okay. So what do we do about this? What do you do about this? So I want you to think about this verse. I'm going to put it on the screen for you. It's from Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 11. And this is God talking through the prophet Ezekiel here. And God said this, Therefore, as surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, I will pay back your angry deeds with my own. And then catch this. I will punish you for all your acts of anger, envy, and hatred. Y'all, is it possible that that's happening right now? Is it possible that as John the Baptist said that Jesus would come to sift us as people like wheat and chaff, that that's happening right now in the United States, that our hearts are being sifted like wheat and chaff, that our hearts are being sifted like love and hatred? I mean, we're really seeing it build up on the national stage. I mean, since the election of President Donald J. Trump, I mean, it's been happening beforehand, but, but really since the last presidential election, almost four years ago, the rage, the anger, the hatred, the envy, all these negative emotions have been building up to a fever pitch where we're seeing it playing out in the streets, where people are being beaten down, where there's rioting, where there's anarchy in the streets. And y'all, you know where that comes from? <laughs> you and me. If we're honest, I mean, we like to think that it's the politician's fault. We like to blame everybody in Washington, D.C. I mean, the human thing to do is to blame other people and never look at ourselves, right? The Bible says, look at the log in your own eye before looking at the speck in your brother's, meaning look at the bigger sin in yourself than in somebody else. But we don't like to do that. We think that we have specks and other people have logs. We like to blame other people for our woes. I'm no different. How about you? But imagine how a politician feels. Gosh, I'm getting the Holy Ghost shivers again. That they are hated so much by people who don't even know them. Imagine if it were you. This is where it's going to cut to the core. Imagine if somebody hashtagged on Twitter, wrong fill in your last name, wrong Smith, wrong Bonnickson. Imagine if it were you that somebody were hashtagging and said wrong whatever that they had wished it was you that had passed away. How would you feel? It would hurt. You'd feel abandoned. Imagine if that's a way our politicians feel. I don't know, but it's a question that we have to at least rhetorically ask. What do you do about it? What can I do about it? What can we do together? Right? We can turn to God and we can pray. The first thing that we can do is we can pray for our elected leaders as the Apostle Paul exhorted us and urged us and almost commanded us to do. Look at these words. I'm going to put them on the screen. Paul said this. He said, give thanks for all people. That's how he starts out this passage in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Give thanks for all people. And then he says, pray this way, and I'm going to put in the word also, for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and it pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and come to the understanding of truth. We can replace that word king with president. We can replace it with governor, speaker of the house, senator, congressperson, people in authority, they could be anybody. It could be your boss, anybody, right? God says, I want you to pray for everybody and to seek their goodwill. And when you do that, when I do that, when we all do that, then we're going to start changing the tenor and the temperature in this nation. And to go from one of hate-filled rage over here to one of love, goodwill, and brotherly love and friendship over here. And that's, I think, what God is trying to get us to see. I think we're at a crossroads in this nation. We're either going to continue to go down to a path where coming back is going to be far, far harder and far more painful. Or we're going to turn to God and say, God, we really need you. And we need to do that collectively, but it starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with every single one of us. Really turning inward to our own hearts and saying, God, where, where am I at? Am I a person of envy? Am I a person of rage? Am I a person of anger? Have I ever 
said things on social media, ill will against another person, whether you know them or not? Or am I really seeking their goodwill? Where are you at? Is this message cutting to the core for you? If it is, let me know in the comment section down below. Just saying, yep, cutting to my core. That's all you got to say. You have a prayer request, by the way. Put it in the comment section down below. Let me know how I can pray for you. Let me know the kind of content you want to hear, too. I'd love to hear that. <sighs> Y'all, this message is for everybody. If you're a Democrat and you have so much hate and rage and anger towards the President of the United States, towards any Republican, but especially President Donald J. Trump, if you hate the man, if you have nothing nice to say about him, you need to check your heart. Okay, shoe on the other foot. If you're a Republican and you have nothing nice to say about Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, Vice President Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, anybody on the Democratic ticket, you need to check your heart. If you're a Christian, whether you're a very conservative, Bible-thumping Christian, and it's okay for me to say that because I is one, and you have hatred, anger, envy, whatever in your heart for another person and a politician you don't know, you need to hit your knees right now and pray to God to forgive you and to seek him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and start seeking the goodwill on other people. If you're not a Christian, let me urge you, Take some time and pause and say, how would I want other people to see me? And maybe for the first time, acknowledge that there's more going on at play in this universe than you can understand. Think about the beauty of who you are as a person and how you were knit together, how you've been created, how intricate you are, heart, soul, mind, body, everything, and really wonder, is this all just by chance or is it possible there is a God? And if you have to acknowledge that there's a possibility that there's a God, then, then let me urge you, just take some time and say, God, reveal yourself to me. God, forgive me of all my sins. And God, help me see other people as you would see me. And then let me know if you've prayed that prayer, put it down below, and how I can reach out to you so I can connect with you one-on-one. -on -one. Y'all, we're at a critical crossroads in America, and it's up to you, it's up to me to turn this nation around. It's not up to Washington, it's not up to any politician, it's not up to any celebrity figurehead on TV. It's up to you, it's up to me to turn this nation around. And we can do that by really praying for other people, by praying for our politicians, by seeking the goodwill of all people, and being a people of love, goodwill, brotherly love, and a people of peace. That's up to you. I want you to do that. I want you to think about that over the next few days. Until I get to talk with you again in the next few days, if this video is something that you've liked, give it a thumbs up. If I've challenged you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, smash the subscribe button. I mean, crush it and come back for more content. Until I get to see you again in the next few days, I pray that you are well. God blessings to you. Goodbye.